Hack number one, wax resist. I've got a white wax candle here and a wax crayon. You can use a white oil pastel as well. And I am just sort of applying it, sort of drawing it on to the hot pressed watercolour paper. I've already drawn out my sketch. Downloadable outline sketches are available on my Patreon membership. Details about that can be found in the description below. So the harder you press with the wax, um, the more sort of dense the line is. So as it's softer, it's a more a broken line. So I would suggest practicing this on your sort of watercolour paper before you do it, just to get used to the technique. I swapped over from the white wax candle now to the white wax crayon and I'm rubbing gently on to these rocks here. What I'm hoping is that once I apply the watercolour on top, it will resist the wax. And as you can see here, as I'm applying this lovely French ochre colour, wet on dry with my size 10 brush, you can see that the wax is resisting the paint. I've just applied some green Appetite Genuine and that's lovely the way it resists the uh, wax there. And it's a really nice, subtle technique to reserve the light of your paper and you can actually apply wax on top of dry washes afterwards and you and in fact reserve the colours there as well so it's a really nice technique one worth practicing as well I'm actually just applying a little bit of cobalt blue to the sky at the top here wet into wet I'm still using my size 10 brush and just painting the some of the cobalt blue onto the water, adding a little bit of green Appetite Genuine as well. Wet on dry and wet into wet. And as you can see, the wax is resisting the paint there as well. So it looks quite effective. Just applying a little bit more of the green Appetite Genuine and burnt umber to the riverbank damp into damp. This is a little bit of burnt umber and the cobalt blue. I'm painting this damp into damp for dark sort of reflections in the water there, still using my size 10 brush. I'm painting the rocks here with a mixture of the cobalt blue and the burnt umber, but you could use ultramarine and burnt sienna and or burnt umber as well. It's quite dilute and I'm actually adding a little bit of the French ochre. You could use quinacridone gold and a little bit of the Greek green appetite genuine this is the first layer as you can see there is a little bit of wax resist going on there as well it not only creates light it creates textures as well so I'm painting the trees now with a mix of burnt umber and some of the cobalt blue wet on dry with my size 10 brushes you can see there there's some wax resist on the left hand side of the tree where the lights coming from so it really creates a nice light textured effect there and I'm now using a plastic card this is a store card cut up so this is my number two second hack I use it a lot in lots of different ways I'm using it to lift off some of the paint here to create again light and texture and I'm doing the same in the water to create sort of movement and light as well and you can use the sort of corner of the card or the side of the card to create lots of different effects here I'm using just ordinary table salt you can use sea salt for hack number three and I'm sprinkling it onto the damp surface and I'm allow my painting to dry naturally. This allows the paint to be absorbed by the salt to create some lovely light textures and here's a close-up here. It's really effective for creating lovely sort of wildflowers effects and as you can see I've got the sort of plastic card technique and the wax resist working really well to create light and textures. I'm rubbing off the salt with my paper towel and for hack number four I'm going to be using some masking fluid and this fluid once dry you can actually paint over the top so it reserves lighter areas so you can actually reserve the white and light of your paper but you can also reserve the light washes which is what I'm about to do this is some hand soap and this is going to protect my brush from the masking fluid so I'm just squeezing out a little bit of hand soap and I'm using a synthetic brush a small round brush as you can see I'm applying the hand soap to the brush and then I'll dip my brush into the masking fluid and start painting it on to the dry surface and what I'm doing is I'm actually just sort of 
of masking out sort of all those sort of lighter branches and things like that in the distance um, to create sort of a light pale green sort of colours. I'm also masking out um, the uh, light of the tree as well and the top of the rocks, light in the water, etc. I'm going a bit mad with it. It's just to really show you what these hacks can do. And they're great for sort of, especially if you're a beginner, to give you sort of confidence in your watercolour paintings. I'm putting lots in the foreground there to really sort of cover up all the water so that you actually can keep the light in the water and there's no fear of losing the light. And I'm actually applying this to the top of the rocks as well, where there's lots of light as well. I'm actually reserving a very light grey colour, so it's not completely white, so it's not going to sort of be too garish when I peel off the masking fluid later. And I will show you how to do that. So I'm just finishing off some final touches of masking fluid here and I'm going to allow it to dry naturally. If you blow dry your masking fluid, it can be very tricky to remove. So on to hack number five, sponges and scourers. And um, this is a way I like to create some lovely texture, especially in the foliage in the trees. Now I'm starting off with this used scourer and I like to tear it so you can get these lovely soft edges. Sometimes if you cut it with the scissors, you'll get these hard, sharp edges. I want it nice and natural. I'm wetting it and wringing all of the water out. I've mixed up some sort of quite soft colours here, neutral colours, a little bit of the French ochre with a little bit of the green appetite genuine. And I'm tapping very gently on to the watercolour paper to create some textures. And if you want your paint darker, just make it creamier. I'm using the natural sponge now. I quite like using a natural sponge, but the scourer is a good alternative. I'm doing the same here, wringing it out. So it's damp and I'm applying the same sort of colours, sort of tapping and creating some darks on top there, working damp into damp. Hack number six is a great technique. I'm using a twig from the garden. I'm sharpening it in my pencil sharpener just to get a nice point. And I'm going to apply the paint just like a pencil, really, and draw with it. I've got a little sort of porcelain little cup here. and I've mixed up some burnt umber and some ivory black. It's kind of a milky consistency. And I'm going to use this to apply um, some sort of distant tree trunks and branches working wet on dry. What's great about the twig is you can draw with it as well. So I'm drawing some rocks on this distant shore here using a little bit of the black and burnt umber with the twig. And I'm also using the twig to sort of scratch on almost. I've added a little bit of ultramarine there as well onto the water in the foreground there to create some movement and ripples and just a little bit more detail. I'm adding a little bit more green appetite genuine and some burnt umber just behind those rocks to really bring them forward a little bit by creating the dark sort of shadows behind. I've added a little bit of French ochre there, working wet on dry with my size 10 brush. I'm now working with that size 10 brush, wet on dry, just building up some darks and details on the foreground trees with a mixture of burnt umber and cobalt blue. It's a glorious colour mix this actually and uh, I've added a little bit more burnt umber there and a touch of black as well to darken things up on the right hand side of the tree um, because the light is coming from the left.
I'm painting the rocks now wet on dry, still with my size 10 brush with a mixture of the cobalt blue, burnt umber and a little bit of ivory black as well. So lovely, dark, creamy colours and these are tubed colours as well. So I've got plenty of them and I'm sort of trying to vary the colours and the tonal values as well. I've waited for it to dry off a little bit. You can still see there's a shine, but Back I am with my plastic card again to swipe the paint in a sort of curvy way to create these rocks in the foreground. It's a really effective technique. Do have a practice before you try it because if the paint's too wet, it'll all just run back in. If it's too dry, it won't move. So just get that timing right. And I'm also doing the same in the distance there and it creates a little bit of depth because they're a lot smaller and not so bright, not such dark contrast I'm just sprinkling on some table salt so that comes out again to create some more texture I'm putting it on the rocks and the trees to hopefully create some more light textures I'm using the plastic card again to scratch out some of that dark paint in the foreground to create some light marks and I'm also using the plastic card to create sort of twigs sort of growing out of some of those rocks as well I'm going to allow my painting to dry once your painting is dry you can remove your masking fluid. I'm removing it with a paper towel. You can use masking tape, a plastic eraser or even your thumb. So once you've removed the masking fluid, I'm going to be softening the edges now for hack number seven. Sometimes when you remove masking fluid, it can be quite harsh. It definitely is on those rocks. So I've got a really cool technique here using a stencil brush, but you could use a synthetic brush. Don't use your good sort of watercolor brushes. It will ruin the points of them. So I'm just softening here. It reawakes the paint underneath and it acts as another sort of layer there and it just softens everything back. And it's really, really effective. As you can see here, I'm using the dried watercolour paint, reawaking it and just softening there. So it just pushes it back and it creates another sort of tonal value and it just brings everything together. It's a really, really nice technique this. So it's a good time to allow your painting to dry again. Once it's dry, I'm using the bokeh technique for hack number eight. It's a circle stencil with my stencil brush, but I'll be using other items to remove the watercolour paint, but it's to create a really lovely atmospheric effect. And I've done it on quite a few of my recent tutorials. This is a magic sponge and I find it the best for removing the paint, especially paint that's a bit difficult to get off. So you're using clean water and just sort of swirling it around in the stencil, lifting off, really sort of lift off there. And I use a paper towel to sort of pat that area to get rid of any excess paint. It's a really great technique. This is the eradicator brush. A link for this can be found in the description below, but you can get some nice smaller circles as well. And it really starts to look atmospheric. I'm just using a little bit of ultramarine black and a little bit of the burnt umber, painting wet on dry some dark reflections of the rocks there, just to create a little bit more depth and darker tonal values to bring the painting forward in the foreground. And just softening with my brush there and glazing on some, some of the foreground rocks there to create to really sort of bring some of the rocks forward, creating some shadows behind. So I'm going to let my paint painting dry again and for hack number nine I'm going to be doing some spattering. I love to spatter especially towards the end of a painting it stops me from fiddling. I'm using white gouache here and with my size six brush and just tapping the brush to create some lovely little white dots of light. For my final hack, hack number 10, I'm using white. This could be white gouache, white watercolour, white acrylic ink and or white pastels and what it it does it just rescues your painting sometimes because you can get back the light I'm using white gouache with my size 6 brush on top of the rocks and on the water as well 
This is a white artist's pastel. You could even use white chalk if you needed to, if that's all you had. And I'm just sort of gently sort of drawing it on to the water surface to give a little sparkle and ripples in the water and on top of the rocks as well to create light and textures there. Just trying to catch the tooth of the paper. There's not a lot of tooth on hot press paper. I'm using the side of the pastel now. You can blend it with your fingertips as well, just on the edge of the trees. It's giving it that dreamy light quality to finish off my painting. I'm removing the washi tape. It reveals a really nice white border, which is a nice way of presenting your work, but it also gives you the opportunity to see if you need to do any more to your painting. I'm going to leave mine there for now. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you'll find it useful in your watercolour painting. Having these hacks to hand really can help you and rescue you, but also they're lovely for creating texture and light and mark making in watercolour painting. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section below. And if you'd like to share any of your watercolour hacks, I'd love to hear from you. And if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You'll get updates of my latest tutorials. And for those of you that want to learn more about watercolour painting, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about that can be found in the top right hand corner or in the description below. Thank you you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.